Young Show. Happy New Year. We've all been told how many times that children are born hero worshippers. And I, for one, believe that implicitly. Now let's listen to Gerda Freuling tell our story. This is the village where we live and work. It's a tiny place in the mountains of Middle Europe, what the tourists call off the beaten track. Because it's small and because it's isolated, it was relatively untouched by the war. That is, all but its people. Many of our village men died in the war, and one of them was my husband, Paul. This is the pharmacy where Paul and I lived and worked together, and now I continue to work here alone. And nearby is the home of our most successful citizen, our Burgermeister, Franz Balik. Franz Balik also owns the coffee house. Balik's coffee house is a center of life as lived in our village. Here we gather to visit, to play a game of chess, to discuss village politics, or just to enjoy a cup of coffee and a delicious berry tart made from the wild mountain berries. All the children of the village pick and sell berries and mushrooms to Herr Balik. Every young man in our village hopes to grow up to be just like Franz Balik, big and successful. For they all know well the story of how he came to this village without a penny to his name and is now our leading citizen. And all the young ladies have their eyes on him too, for Franz is still a bachelor. Good morning, Herr Bollock. Good morning, Auntie. Mushrooms. What? No berries? Oh, no. It rained last night, so I knew there were a lot of mushrooms. You pay more for mushrooms, so I just let the berries go for today. <laughs> You've got a good head for business on your shoulders, and you work hard. You'll do well for yourself. Thank you, Herr Bollock. Someday I'm going to be the Burgermeister. I'll wager you will be at that. In the meantime, Herr Burgermeister, let's weigh these mushrooms. Well, you've got more than a pound here, Hansi. Oh, I knew it. It's much more than I picked yesterday. I think it's more than two pounds. Could be. Let's try the two-pound weight. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, Hansi. You don't have two pounds. Are you sure? See for yourself. It's just a hair under a pound and a half. Oh, and I thought I picked so many. I thought sure I'd have enough money to buy my grandmother's glasses. Let's see, I owe you just over 97 pennies. Tell you what I'll do. I'll make it an even hundred. Fair enough? Thank you very much, Herr Barwick. Do your books balance? Oh, yes. Indeed. <laughs> you will do well for yourself. Here you are. Thank you. Oh, just a minute. Don't you want your candy? No boy ever leaves Balak's coffee house without a piece of candy. Oh, I gave the last piece to Gretchen. Just a minute, Hansi. I'll get it filled. doesn't balance. It's funny. this evening. Will that be all right? Yes. A well, fine hair, Doctor. Yes, I'll do that. Goodbye. Will you weigh these marbles for me? Please. It's very important. Well, now, what's so important? Oh, please weigh them for me. Please. 
Very well. Oh, weighing marbles. they weigh? Just a quarter of a pound. Oh, I knew. Oh, there they go again. You know, everybody thinks they're dying. I know it's just spring fever, though. Here's Gerda Frowling. I gotta go anyway. I got some very important figuring to do. Bye. Austria for her. Oh, but why? It's not my birthday. Oh, I know why. <laughs> you wanted to remind me to powder my nose. You know why, Gerda. Well, whatever your reasons, she's delightful, and I thank you very much. You're as evasive as a quail in the forest, but if you notice dinner tonight, I caught the quail. Yes, and it was delicious. Is this the wine you wished, Herr Bellick? Oh, yes, Berta. Will you open it, please? Champagne. To compliment you and to help you make up your mind. I wish it could be that simple. Gerda, what can I do to convince you? Oh, it isn't that I need any convincing about you. It's just that... Uh, I don't know about me. Don't you know how you feel? Don't you like me? Well, what a silly question. You've got to start someplace. Do you love me? Uh, I don't know. I want only the best for you, Gerda. I want to care for you. I want to change your life. Change my life? First, to take you out of that pharmacy. <laughs> and who, may I ask, would do the work? Sell it. You could get a good price for it. That location is a good site for an oh, inn. Oh, my goodness, what would this village do without a pharmacy? When we're married, maybe we won't care what this village does. Gerda, you don't belong here any more than I do. Let me take you to Vienna, to Paris, to Berlin. Franz, please. I was born in this village. I think it's a beautiful place. And I honestly don't think I could be happy any place else your happiness. Thank you. And to my life's work. They are one, Gerda. I promise you that. Thank you, Franz. A hundred and a hundred four twenty-six it's twenty-six crowns and seven Nine, eleven, thirteen pennies. Twenty-six crowns and thirteen pennies? There's a drawer in the bottom. Yes, I know. Open it all the way. from Austria, too. Oh! It's beautiful! Put it on. It's for you. Oh, Franz. It's, it's very lovely, but I can't. Can't what? Can't put it on? Here, let me help you. Well... Come, come, 
here to your answer. The whole village is pitying me because I'm not married. Oh. Every day they try consoling me by marrying off their daughters to me. Make everybody have me. Tell them you'll be my wife. Uh, Franz, I know it's not fair that I should keep you waiting like this, but... Then be fair. Say it. Or I'll take your silence for acceptance. Oh, Franz. I'll, I'll give you my answer tomorrow. I promise. Tomorrow morning? In the evening. Tomorrow evening? Good. Yes. I'll put more champagne on the ice for the celebration. Thank you. Oh, uh, here. Oh. And thank you again, Franz. How are you this morning? Speaking for myself, I'm fine. But my grandson here is acting very strange. Oh? Very strange indeed. I want you to have a look at him. Got you done, Hansi. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with him. We don't have to bury him yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just spring fever. We're having an epidemic. I'll fix you a little tonic. Oh, I'm all right. Mm, you don't sound it. He went out last night after dark. Oh? I was worried near to death. Well... He was probably out looking for some very special herbs to sell to Herr Balak. Hmm? Hardly. He wouldn't even get up this morning to pick his mushrooms. I'm never going to pick mushrooms again. Never. Or berries either. Oh, never is a very long time, Hansi. Especially for a ten-year-old boy. I mean it. Never. You'll see. Well, uh, you'll see. You get this down. That's not going to do any good. Well, thank you. I have some marketing to do. Hansi, I'll meet you across the street at Bollock's. Okay, Grandma. Frau Lang, you better pick up a torch. Our little friend here needs sweetening. That's a very good idea. <laughs> you may wind it up if you like. No. No, thank you. I don't want to. Very well. It has a very nice tune. Uh, that stuff smells awful. And anyway, nothing's wrong with me. Well, unfortunately, medicine doesn't taste like candy. But fortunately, candy doesn't taste like medicine either. You've got a new bracelet. Yes. Herbalic gave it to me. She gave you the music box, too. That's right. <laughs> You'd think it were Christmas at least, wouldn't you? Do you like them? Yes, of course I like them. Why? <laughs> what a question. I mean it. Why do you? Well, because he's a very fine man. Why? Oh, my, you are acting strangely today. Come on over here, and I'll give you some of this. It'll make you feel better. Sit down. Please tell me, Gerda, why do you like him? Because he's nice. And he's a burgermeister, and he's hardworking, and he's God-fearing. No, he's not. Well, what a thing to say. What's the truth? If you lie and cheat and steal, you're not nice. Well, you need some more of this. That's all I can say. And you're so nice, I don't want you to like them. Uh, Herr Balak is your friend. I don't think you want to talk this way against him. He's not my friend. Not anymore. And please, he shouldn't be your friend either. Let's see. What is it? What's the matter? I'll show you. I wasn't going to, but you just can't marry him. You just can't. I'll show you. Herr Bollock's in the storeroom if you want him. Well, no, no. I'm just waiting for my grandmother. I got it! I got it! You got what? See? See what it says? Did you take 
that from across the street? Yes, and see what it says? One pound. Now, let's put it on the scale and see what it was. You take that right back to Herr Bollock. That's stealing, and you know it. Well, I didn't steal it. I only took it to show you. Show me what? This. Young man, listen to me. That is not yours. You took it. That's stealing. Now, before things get any more serious than they already are, let's take that right back where it belongs. Are you coming? I certainly am. Good. And then you'll see who's been doing the stealing around here. I don't understand you today. I just don't understand you at all. Gerda, good morning. Good morning, And Hansi, you left without your candy yesterday. Franz, Hansi here has something to say to you. You owe me 26 crowns and 13 pennies. You're a thief. Hansi! I'll box your ears. Look, Hansi, I'm ashamed of you. No respect. Our young ones will have better manners than that. Hansi, you apologize this moment. Oh, Franz, he's not feeling well. I thought it was just spring fever, but obviously it's a case for here, Dr. Idel. Now, go on, Hansi. Well, what have you got to say? He's a thief. Hansi! Here, I bought a torch for you. And it's soap you need to wash out your mouth. Your grandmother's right. Now, give Herr Bullock the weight and let's go off to Herr Doctor. Wait? Yeah, your dishonest weight. Here, give me that. No. Please excuse him, Herr Bullock. Just wait till I get you home. Well, I'm not coming home yet, Grandma. Now, look, Hansi. Huh? That's enough of this nonsense. Give him the weight. No, I'll give it to you, Gerda, to put on the scale. You'll give that to me right now before I call the police. Go ahead, call the police. Go ahead, call them. Saints in heaven, if his dear mother could see him just this day. Hansi, Hansi, see how you're upsetting your poor grandmother with your behavior. Come now, be a good boy. I'll call the police. No, no, that won't be necessary. Hansi. Hansi, take your grandmother home now, and we'll forget all about this unfortunate episode. Oh, thank you, Herr Bollock. You're too easy on the boy, Herr Bally. Come. No, Grandma. The wait, my friend. Don't call me your friend. Garrett, I'm doing this just for you. Please, put it on the scale. Please. Oh, I'm please. losing patience with you. Give me that. No. Franz, please. Hansi, what is all this about the scale and the weight? Why do you want to make us all so unhappy? Well, I'm not trying to make anybody unhappy. Most of all, you foul, Garrett. And if you marry him, you will be. Oh. So please, put it on the scale, and you'll see. No. He, uh, he asked me to put it on the scale. Why did he do that, Franks? Well, how should I know? You ought to keep a closer eye on that boy, or he'll land up in jail. I give you my word. Yes, Herr Bollock. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, there was no need to frighten her to death. Well, it's also ridiculous. Here, give Isn't me that. Isn't it so ridiculous? Why are you so rude? Yes, of course, I... I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, Bertha, coffee and cakes for everyone. Uh, uh, sit down, please, everybody, sit down. Shall we sit down, Gerda? Perhaps you have something to tell me? No, Franz. I want to do as Hansi asked. Please. Everybody, look. This is one pound weight that Hansi gave me. Now, I'll put it there. These are one half pound bags of coffee. They should balance perfectly. There, you see, it doesn't. Why doesn't it, Franz? Well, perhaps the scale needs a slight adjustment. Yes. Well, perhaps the weight is loaded. Well, I... I... Beata, where is that coffee? All this fuss over a few pennies. I, for one, am leaving. Leave, leave Herr Hoff to Heidi. Don't leave. Come back. I think we should all take time to ask Herr Bullock a few questions. If he's been stealing pennies from our children, why, how do we know he hasn't been stealing from us? After all, that's our Burgermeister. He handles a lot of the town funds, the, the school funds, the hospital funds. Has anyone ever looked at your books? Has any one of you ever here seen them? She's right. Yes, now I know why he keeps the books so well locked up. Well, Herr Bellick, let's have a look at those books. Where do you keep them? I know. Right back here. The keys, Herr Bellick. I'd like to see those books, too. Yeah, 
Now, wait. Please, listen to me. You're a sensible woman. I'll give back every penny. No one will be out anything, I promise you. Gerda, we can move away from here. Please, don't let this come between us. Forget about us. But think about Hansi. And all the children, all the little boys who wanted to grow up to be just like you. The Burgermeister. You know, in a sense, all children are the responsibility of all adults. What they grow up to be depends on us. Now they found out that you are a cheat and a liar. You've destroyed their faith in us, Franz. And I can't forgive you for that. I'm sorry. I wanted to grow up to be just like him. Never mind. You grow up to be just like Hansi Lang. Because you're a wonderful little boy, I think. Why did he want to cheat us? Oh, I don't know, dear. Maybe when he was a little boy, somebody didn't love him enough. But lots of people love you. And you're going to grow up to be a fine man. I wish I was growing up now, so I could marry you. Oh, thank you, Hansen. Believe me, if I could, I'd wait for you. <laughs> oh, Hansi. And so life goes on, but there have been some changes. I now have an assistant. Hansi makes the deliveries and keeps my shop swept out. It's nice not to work alone. There have been some other changes, too. Franz Balik left town. He had to. He couldn't face the accusing eyes of our children. The coffee house is still the center of life has lived in our village. The visiting still goes on. And the chess game. And, of course, the arguments. The children still sell their berries and mushrooms to the proprietor. The new proprietor, that is, Kurt Seiden. Already he is an important part of our village. We all like him very much. He is a very nice man. Kurt and I understand each other. This is our village. Here we live and work. We are still isolated still off the beaten track, and we still have hopes for the future, a peaceful future. You see, in our village, we love our children. The French theologian Joseph Jobert says, children have more need of models than of critics. Well, good night, and see you next week.